Welcome back everybody. We're going to do another dynamics problem. So let's just get to it. So this problem says a smooth two kilogram collar is attached to a spring having a stiffness of K of a spring constant K, which equals three newtons per meter and an unstretched length of 0.75 meters. If the collar is at rest from point A at A, determine its acceleration and the normal force of the rod on the collar when Y equals one. So let me explain this picture right here. So these are not two separate bodies. This is the state of the spring and the, the body or the collar at point A. And then a moment later, it's at point C. And the, during that time, the spring is stretched. So our goal is to find the normal force and how fast it is accelerating at point C when it has fallen this distance y, which is going to be y equals 1. So the first thing we're going to do, like most dynamics problems, is going to draw a free body diagram of this um, collar. Now I'm going to choose an arbitrary distance so that we can actually use all the variables in this problem. So let's just imagine that the collar is somewhere in the middle and we're going to draw the free body diagram as if it was in the middle. So let's draw that. So the collar is going to look something like this. So the forces acting on this body is going to be, well, the weight of the collar because it does have some mass. So we can define the weight going downward because that's how gravity works, assuming that uh, this is the bottom of the, the, the ground, so to speak. So weight is pointing downward. And then if, if it were right here, that means the spring would still be on the collar. So somewhere over here at some angle, we're going to have a spring force and it's going to be pulling it in this direction. It won't be pushing the collar, it'll be pulling it. And that's just a, the intrinsic property of the spring. So it'll be pulling the collar in that direction. However, if you notice um, in this diagram, the collar stays vertically on this uh, pole. So that means there's no horizontal movement in the x direction or in the in the x direction. So if we just left our free body diagram here, this would imply that the collar is actually moving to the right and downward. So to counteract that force going to the right is going to be some normal force. And this is the normal force that we're trying to look for. So that is all the forces on this free body diagram. So now that we have that, we're going to actually uh, do some very basic uh, some of the forces in the x and y direction to find the normal force m and we're going to find the acceleration later by looking at the some of the forces in the vertical direction. So as we defined earlier this is going to be um, x is going to be positive in the right direction and then y is going to be positive in the up direction. So we can sum the forces in the x direction. So we could call that positive and we could say that fs I forgot to note that this angle right here is actually going to be, I should draw on a dashed line, is going to be theta. So if you look at some trig, you can look at this uh, transversal line. So opposite interior angles are the same. So that's why I could say this is theta. So with that in mind, we could say that Fs cosine theta minus n equals zero. And again, the reason why it equals zero is because this collar is remaining in a vertical uh, path. It's not moving to the right or to the left. It's restricted by this pole. So that's why it equals zero. There's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So since we're trying to look for the normal force, we could simply define n as n equals fs cosine theta. So to define the spring force, I'm pretty sure most of you guys remember this, that the spring force is the spring constant times the stretch within the spring or how much the spring has stretched over a given amount of time. So if you look at this diagram, if you pay close attention, how would you find how much the spring has stretched from A to B? Well, simply all you have to do is find the length of this, this uh, time when uh, this collar has reached point C, find the length of this string, spring minus the length of this spring. Because if you take those differences, you could actually see how much the spring has stretched. So what we're going to do is define a right triangle. So you can see there's already a right triangle being created, so we could use that to find these various lengths. So I'm going to redraw that triangle and hopefully that you guys could see that a little bit better. So we're going to have a triangle that looks like this. 
And then I use these constants, so I define 0.75 as L, and then I defined, or the problem defined this as Y, and this is going to be the length we're looking for. And by using the Pythagorean theorem, we can also define this as Y squared plus L squared, all square rooted, and we could define that length. So as we said, the change in X is actually the change between these two, um, these two lengths. So I could say that the square root of y squared plus l squared minus l will give us the change in the in this how much the spring has actually stretched from this point to this point. All right. So that now that we have fs defined, we still don't have cosine theta defined. Well, if you look at this triangle, we define theta as this angle between the hypotenuse and the side length l. So if we look at that, we could define cosine theta as well. So cosine is just adjacent over a hypotenuse, so it'll be this. And now that we have that, we can actually plug into this equation because we have fs and cosine theta. So we can define the normal force as k times delta x, which is going to be the square root of y squared plus l squared minus l. And again, this is just how much the spring has stretched from point A to point C. And then we could multiply that by cosine theta, which is going to be L over the square root of y squared plus L squared. So I'm going to distribute these variables, and let's see what we get. So this is the normal force, and then all we have to do is plug in the constants that we defined earlier. So we're going to say y equals 1, uh, L is going to be 0.75, k is going to be 3, and we can plug in all those values. So after plugging in my calculator, the normal force acting on the collar is 0 0.9 newtons. So we can say that this right here is 0 0.9 newtons, and now we can solve the rest of the problem, which is, uh, which is determine its acceleration when y equals 1. So let's see what we can do. So we're going to sum the forces in the y direction, so we're going to define up as positive, and what we're going to get, we're going to have Fs sine theta minus the weight of the collar, and that's going to equal some mass of the collar times the acceleration of the collar in the vertical direction. See, this is not, this doesn't equal zero because the collar is actually moving at some acceleration from point A to point C. But in the horizontal direction, it's restrained by this pull, so therefore we could say that the sum of the forces in the x direction actually equals zero. So once we have that, we can actually define sine theta, so it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so it's just going to be that ratio. So we could say it's sine theta equals y over the square root of y squared plus l squared. And we already defined fs up here, so it's this times the spring constant. So we get k times the square root of y squared plus l squared minus kl, and then multiply this whole thing by y over the square root of y squared plus l squared. So that's just the this part of the equation. And then the weight is simply um, the mass times acceleration due to gravity, and this is going to be may. So I'm going to distribute this, uh, this variable to these uh, other variables. So let's see what we get. We get ky, those two cancel. So then we get kly over the square root of y squared plus l squared minus mg equals may. And our goal is to find the acceleration. So we're going to try to isolate a y. Um, so we could divide, divide everything by the mass, so we get k over m times y minus kly over m square root of y squared plus l squared minus g, and that's going to equal a y. So now all we have to do is plug in the numbers. And when you plug in these numbers in your calculator, what you get is Ay equals negative 9.21 meters per second squared. And now you may be asking, why is it negative? 
and that's because we defined our orientation in this fashion. So we said y is going up and x is going to the side. So therefore, when the when the collar falls from A to C, it, or it's going in the negative y direction. So therefore, it's accelerating in the downward direction. So the negative sign just says that we're accelerating downward at a rate of 9.21 meters per second. So that is the whole problem problem and I'm going to quickly recap of what we just did. So let's start from the very beginning. The very first thing we understood, uh, we had to define a free body diagram. Um, that's usually the very first step you do for all dynamics problems. We define a free body diagram and we looked at the various forces that are acting on to the collar. And from there, we define that the sum of the forces in the x direction actually equals zero because the color is constrained to this pole. Therefore, it's not moving left or right, and it's just ver vertically moving up or down, or moving downward in this case. And then from there, we wrote out the equation, set it equal to zero, and define the normal force being applied to the collar as Fs times cosine theta. And we defined Fs as the change, uh, the spring constant times the change in x, or the how much the spring has stretched from the initial state to its final state. And we defined that by the, its original state, which is 0.75 meters, and then we subtract that, or found the difference between that length and this length when it is at point C. So we created a right triangle with the angle theta and use this length and this length to find the change in x as you can see here. Then also using that relationship, we also uh, defined cosine theta as the ratio between this length over the hypotenuse. And we simply plugged in these values into this equation and solved for the normal force acting on the collar and we got 0.9 newtons. Now we have to find the acceleration in the y direction or in the vertical direction when the collar is at point C, or in other words, when y equals one. So we set up the equation and we do not set this equal to zero because the collar can actually move up and down. So therefore there must be some sort of acceleration with that collar in the vertical direction. So we defined uh, sine of theta as, as uh, the ratio between this length over this hypotenuse. We're again using that same right triangle. And then we already defined Fs as defined earlier. And we wrote the equation again by plugging in these values. So this is what we get. And then we plugged in the weight uh, force as mg, the mass, times, the mass of the collar times the acceleration due to gravity. And we set that equal to the acceleration uh, in the y direction times the mass of the collar. Then all we did was some algebraic steps to isolate a y or the acceleration in the vertical direction. And what we finally got was that the collar is accelerating downward at 9.21 meters per second squared. So hopefully that made sense. The, the most tricky part is actually finding delta x in this problem. And that's just understanding that delta x is how much the spring has stretched from, from its initial state to its final state. And you just have to use this idea of a right triangle to uh, solve that. There's also other ways to solve this problem, like using the idea of uh, conservation of energy, which could actually make this problem a lot simpler. And you can ignore all these uh, this, uh, trigonometry and stuff like that. But uh, we'll go through that in a future video, mo more than likely. But uh, just know there's more than one way to solve this problem. So uh, hopefully this helped you. Um, there'll be more dynamics problems coming up in the future.